I've been working out for 14 years. I've been in the fitness industry as a coach for about seven years. Pretty much since about 2018, since I really doubled down on posting on social media, I've been accused of steroids <laughs> after posting photos like this. So let's get to the bottom of the accusations. So Brock Ashby, 27 year old trainer, natty attainable or juicy? Thank you. Uh, someone says I've aged like 20 years. Uh, someone says on the higher end of what I'd say is realistically achievable natty, but given the time frame, I'd say more than likely natty. Is that really on the higher end of what's realistically achievable? I'm new to bodybuilding, but he looks like someone who just lifts a lot. Is that really on the higher end of what's realistically achievable? I'm new to bodybuilding, but he looks like someone who just lifts a lot. Someone said natty, uh, looks natty, very impressive that he's managed to stay lean at 90 kg, guessing this dude's like 5'11", 6 foot. Correct, 6 foot. How tall is he? Unless he is at least 5'11 tall, then the weight at such low body fat indicates juice. Otherwise, this look can definitely be achieved natty in the given time frame. Traps, shoulders, and arms are not huge. <laughs> in fact, I'd say that either this is a bad photo or he should really focus on his shoulders. Possible natty, you can tell dude's got good genes from the first pick. These accusations aren't that bad following this post that I did back in 2020, where I show a photo of me in 2014 at 69 kg and then a photo of me in 2020, which is at 90 kg. Now this is a pretty good physique that I uh, achieved, but there is a huge difference. There's literally 21 kg difference, and I wanna get to the bottom of how I achieved increasing 21 kilos of my weight over a six year period. And I even achieved this in 2018 as well. Here's a photo of me in 2018, and I was at 90 kg at that time as well. So I pretty much just maintained my weight from 2018 to where we are now in 2022. I'm a similar weight, I'm at 90 kg. It does seem like I have used assistance to achieve such a rapid transformation. So I want to get to the bottom of it. Let's do it. To start from the beginning, I was a very skinny kid growing up. I moved around a lot just naturally. I had ants in my pants, my parents would always say, and I was always a very active kid. I did six sports throughout the year. I did softball, volleyball, rugby, touch rugby, athletics, and rugby league. So I was super busy. I was always very active into sport, but mixed with that sort of activity level, I was always a, a hard gainer. I struggled to gain weight. I would always eat a ton of food and I would never really gain weight. And that kind of comes down to having something called an efficient metabolism where you kind of run through all the calories that you use and you don't really process all the nutrients. That's just how I am genetically. When I got into working out, as I got older and I started at 14 years old, I found that I put on muscle mass quite easily. So I was kind of on this ectomorph, so kind of skinnier body type, but also slightly mesomorphic. And I put that down to my Maori genetics, like an indigenous New Zealander, that's my background. My dad's a full Maori, my mum is a European and I had, I guess, great genetics. And I think something that confuses people a lot now, if I skip forward to how my physique is now, is I don't store much body fat in my abdomen. I've got a DEXA scan, and I've showed this before in a YouTube video, but I'll show it again. In this DEXA scan, it shows where I store my body fat. And I store most of my body fat in between my knees and my hips. Like, I store fat in my glutes. I store fat in my legs. I don't store much in my abdomen, so it looks like I'm leaner than I actually am. In my final year of high school, I was actually 88.5 kilos. I remember hitting it. I remember standing on the scales because I was like, this is crazy, because I was a small kid, but I hit puberty really late. So towards the end of high school, I started actually getting taller and getting bigger. Mix that with gym and this kind of appetite that I just developed from being so active. I was actually quite big. That's only 1.5 kilo underneath what I am now. But then I got into the music scene and I wanted to pursue a different look. I didn't play rugby anymore. I was a singer. So I wanted to kind of drop body fat. So I went through this big journey of going through one meal a day, trying the keto diet, trying vegetarian, trying all these types of things. And I didn't do it by the best practices. I went on super low calories, like 1500 calories a day, which is not much for a six foot, super active, going to the gym every day guy. I got all the way down to 69 kg. My waist was 28, 28 size waist. And that's where this 2014 pick comes from. I was 69 kg. I was super, super, super lean, but I was also super skinny. I didn't have that much muscle mass, but because you're lean, it looks like you're bigger than you are. From that point, pretty much, was when I started to reverse diet and go, well, this is actually unsustainable. I'm not eating much. I'm tired. I'm hangry. My quality of life's pretty shit. So I started eating more and actually trying to get bigger, put on muscle mass. That's when I was still a singer, but I kind of started transitioning out and started to think about personal training and really took my training seriously after that 
and I put on muscle mass really quickly and gained weight really quickly as well. And this is where people accuse me of being on steroids, going from this 2014 body to this 2018 body. They're like, how can you put on 21 kg of muscle? And I think it's literally because I was so deprived in the 69 kg body. I was under eating, I was overtraining, I was even doing cardio. I used to put rubbish bags on and go for runs and do extreme things. I was scared of carbohydrates. I remember I would eat a peanut butter sandwich with banana and honey in it and I would literally punish myself by going for a run doing crunches, doing planks, just to try and make up for it. I was in this very unhealthy mindset. When I came out and I kind of rescued myself from this terrible relationship with food and started training and started actually fueling myself with calories to become stronger, to build muscle, I put on muscle really quickly because my body remembered what it was like to put on muscle mass. Yeah. Keep in mind, I used to be 88.5 kg. Now I'm 69 and now I'm getting back into this point where I'm in a calorie surplus, where I'm eating, where I'm trying to build my metabolism up. So I put on muscle mass really quickly. If someone was 69 kg naturally and that was their weight, that's where they hovered, and then they went all the way up to 90 kg, I would be suspicious as well. I'd probably mm. accuse that guy of being on steroids too. But if they were normally 88 kilos, 88.5 kilos, went down to 69 and then came back up to 90. It's just like, oh, they just really put on 1.5 kg. It's not a big deal. So if you keep in mind the context of me being pretty much my original weight that I was when I was at high school, it's not hard to understand that I achieved this body naturally. There's heaps of things that are contributing to my transformation. I put a ton of work in. I study a lot. I'm a personal trainer. I train people all around the world. I have thousands of clients. I'm educated, right? I read the research. I do all these things and that helps me be smart with the time that I do put into my training. Be smart with the amount of calories that I consume, with my macros. Now I'm like dialed in and I'm smashing it. But look, I'm still 90 kg. Going from 69 kilos to 90 kg, was not assisted. I didn't consume steroids, I didn't inject myself, I didn't do all that type of stuff. I was just literally coming back to homeostasis where my body belonged. Uh, that's pretty much it. That's all I wanted to say. That's my journey with steroids. I'll see you in the next video.